Welcome. This is the third video in the series on principles of radiographic exposure. In the last video, we talked about technique, the emission spectrum, and beam propagation. If you didn't see it already, I recommend you watch it now. In this video, we will talk about interactions with matter, attenuation, and differential absorption. We'll begin with interactions with matter. When the primary beam interacts with matter, which for us is the patient, the beam can interact in different ways, depending on the energy of the x-ray and the material that it is interacting with. With this, only scatter, absorption, and transmission of the primary beam can occur. The beam that reaches the imaging plate is known as the remnant beam. So let's go ahead and look at those three events. Um, here we have the x-ray tube where the x-rays are produced. Um, they come out the collimator, and what comes out the collimator towards the patient is the primary beam. Um, one event that can occur as the beam interacts with uh, material is an absorption event. So it interacts with an atom here, it gives up its energy, an absorption event occurs, and it doesn't continue on. Another event that can happen is a scattering event. It interacts with an atom. Instead of carrying on in this direction here, like it would like to, it scatters in a different direction. Um, the third event that can occur is a transmission event, where it just goes straight through the patient, doesn't interact with anything, and it hits the image receptor behind. Note that the scattering event can also affect the image receptor in the same exact area as a, as a transmission event can. Um, it can also go off in a direction and not interact with the image receptor at all. Um, we need to remember that the x-ray beam is just, when it's interacting with the body, it's just collecting information. So it's collecting information about the anatomy, about, um, about, about the body that it's interacting with, and it's sending that on to the image receptor. Uh, in an absor absorption event, it is still carrying information. A lack of information is still information. A transmission event is information. A scatter event is a mismatch of information. So it's taking information from this area right here that should be uh, presented on the image receptor in this location. But now instead it's being presented over here where the information of the body in this plane should be represented. Um, now let's look at the five, now let's get into the ways that the uh, events occur, okay? There's five ways that these events can occur. The first type of interaction that we'll look at is called classical interactions. Classical interaction is also known as coherent or Thompson, just to be slightely more confusing. J.J. Um, Thompson discovered the phenomenon, so Thompson's capitalized. In this event, the X-ray photon interacts with an atom and it changes direction. The interaction occurs when a photon energy with a photon energy level typically below 10 keV. The incoming photon is absorbed by the atom, exciting it. The atom then releases the energy in a new direction. Due to the low energy of the photons, classical interactions do not contribute to the image and adds slightly to the patient dose. So here we have a diagram of the event occurring. Um, the incident x-ray comes in, okay, it interacts with the atom and it's released in a, a new direction. It should continue on this way, but instead it's going to continue on this way. Um, note that the energy coming in is the same as the energy coming out. An event that we'll look at is called Compton. Compton is a scattering event, often referred to as Compton scattering. When an X-ray photon interacts with an outer shell electron, the X-ray photon changes direction and loses energy. The outer shell electron is ejected from the atom and is called a Compton electron. The scattered X-rays energy depends on the angle of deflection. The angle could be 
0 to 180 degrees. When the angle, angle is 180 degrees, we refer to it as backscatter. Um, it still retains two-thirds of its original energy, so it never loses more than a third of its original energy. Backscatter radiation causes the highest doses for technologists. So when the x-ray beam is going straight out towards the patient, okay, um, events called backscattering can occur uh, through the Compton interactions where the x-ray comes will come back 180 degrees, so it'll come straight back, or roughly straight back to the to the source. We're typically standing on this side, especially if we're doing portables, or by the portable. So this uh, radiation is gonna come to us, <clears throat> the scatter. And that's what's gonna expose us to some degree. So this causes the highest dose for the technologist, okay, the back scatter. The ejected electron and the uh, scattered x-ray can interact with other atoms. Okay, so this is a good diagram of that here. Um, so this is a high energy incident photon. It's interacting with outer shell electrons here. It ejects this electron, so this will be the Compton electron here. That x-ray photon carries off in a scattered direction, in a different direction, okay, with lower energy. Uh, the lower energy can interact with another atom in the same way, and still, the scattered photon will go off, it will have less energy than even here, and another Compton electron, in, okay, and this can keep happening until it loses all of its energy, um, or it is transmitted outside the body. Okay, and obviously it's not going to be in the, it's not going to be in the direction that it should have been initially uh, to hit the IR properly. Um, it's going to be in most likely in some other direction. Okay, if it does make it to the IR. So Compton and energy due to the conservation of energy. The energy that enters the atom from the incident elect X-ray is equal to the binding energy of the interacted electron plus the kinetic en energy of the recoil electron or the Compton electron um, plus the energy of the scattered x-ray. So however much energy it's putting in here, it's going to give up a certain amount of energy to this ejection of this electron. Okay, And then the um, the scattered photon that, that carries off in a new direction is going to be the, the remaining amount of energy okay so whatever the energy here it gives up so much so it loses some here and then whatever's left is going to be how energetic this scattered photon is okay and we can and mathematically it's summed up as this so the incident photon okay has a certain amount of energy, all right, this, and, uh, and it comes into the atom, all right. So the scattered photon goes off, so that's one component. The binding energy, it's going to lose this binding energy to the atom uh, by doing this, and then how much energy is uh, this Compton electron has going off, because it's going to be moving off with, um, it's a particle, it has mass, and it has, um, speed <clears throat> it has a certain amount of speed it's moving so it has a certain amount of kinetic energy okay so um so all these all these energies are going to stay equal all right um the amount of energy that's being put in it's going to be equal to the amount of energy coming out okay it's coming out in different ways but it's still equal to the amount of energy that's coming out and you can see here that this uh i like this that uh, that the wavelength there is longer than it was, so that means this is a less energetic photon. So now we'll look at the probability of Compton interactions occurring in matter. Compton scattering decreases as X-ray energy increases. So as we increase the KVP, right, as the energy of the photons increases, um, Compton scattering is going to uh, happen less often. 
okay? And the equation is one over E. So if this is, if the energy is two, let's just say, then it's gonna occur with one half, zero, 0 0.5, okay? If this becomes four, so now the energy has gone up, right? The energy has gone up, then it's gonna be 0 0.25, okay? So that's a decrease, that's a smaller number. Compton scattering occurs over all energies and is independent of the atomic number. So it doesn't matter what the atomic number of the matter that it's interacting with. Um, it, it's going to occur the same amount. Okay, it's only dependent on the energy. The third interaction that we'll look at is the photoelectric effect. Photoelectric interaction is an absorption event. When an X-ray photon interacts with an inner shell electron, the incident photon expends all of its energy. The incident photon must be more energetic than the binding energy of the inner shell of the atom that it's interacting with. It ejects the electron. The ejected electron is known as a photoelectron. It can undergo many other interactions. And then outer shell electrons from the atom will fill in the hole created by that ejected electron. This creates secondary X-rays known as the characteristic effect. These X-rays are low energy and behave the same way as scatter radiation. As they are low energy, they do not typically make it out of the body. Uh, they contribute nothing of diagnostic value to the image. Look at the photoelectric effect here. So the incident photon comes into the atom, interacts with an inner shell electron, it has more energy than this binding energy, so it's able to knock out this electron, which is known as the photoelectron from the atom. Uh, outer shell electrons will fill in this hole, and this jump, because these are low energy and this is a higher energy, this jump, the atom needs to release energy, so it releases energy in the way of giving up a, a photon of giving up a, a characteristic effect, a characteristic x-ray, okay, known as secondary x-rays, and, and this is just scatter, and it um, adds to the patient dose, and it adds nothing of uh, value, of uh, value to the image. Photoelectric effect in energy. So due to the conservation of energy, the energy that enters the atom from the incident X-ray is equal to the binding energy of the interacted electron plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectron. And we'll see it here. So the incident X-ray coming in has a certain amount of energy. Okay. It gives up energy to knock out uh, the inner shell electron here. So it, so it gives up a certain amount of energy and then this emitted, this uh, photoelectron, the ejected electron, has a certain amount of kinetic energy. So if this is, so the extra energy is being transmitted here. If it, how much more energy it had than the binding energy, okay, into this electron. The produced, the produced photon is done by the, the difference in the binding shells of the electrons evolved here, all right? So, um, so the characteristic X-ray that's emitted has nothing to do with the energy here, okay? It has, all, it has everything to do with the energy of the shell of the electrons, okay, of the binding energy of the shells of the electrons that are, are um, of the outer shell that's dropping down here, okay, the difference in the energies. The probability of photoelectric interactions in matter. So we talked about the probability of Compton. Now what's the probability of these interactions even occurring with the photoelectric effect? Uh, photoelectric interactions decrease as energy increases, so it's the same, um, the same basic structure here, okay? Um, but here the equation is e to the three, so that means if the energy is two, this is going, this is going to be eight, 
okay? So it's going to be one eighth right here, um, whereas in the in the previous it was um, if this was two, it was only just one half, right? So the photoelectric effect interactions has decreases a lot more as the energy increases. It's l much less likely to happen. The photoelectric absorption occurs over all energies and increases proportionally to the cube of the atomic number um, of the matter that it's interacting with. So as so so these are kind of two competing things, right? The energy that that we control, that we set um, with the KVP of the X-ray beam, and then um, and then the atomic number, which we which we don't control, of of what we're X-raying, okay? Um, and and it occurs as z to the three. So the higher the atomic number, it's more it's much more likely to interact. It to, to happen, okay? So the bigger this number is, it's much more likely. Whereas energy is the inverse, okay? So the so the higher the energy, the m much more likely, less likely it is to happen, okay? The more energy, the less likely it is to happen, much more likely because it's to the third. The higher the atomic number, the much more likely it is to happen, okay? That it is going to be absorbed in uh, what we're x-ray. All right, so these are some important substances since we're talking about binding energies, K-shell, uh, binding energies with the photoelectric effect, and then um, atomic numbers, okay? So the atomic number matters to the photoelectric interaction, right? The photoelectric effect only. It doesn't matter to the Compton interactions. So we'll go ahead and we'll compare Compton and the photoelectric effect here. Compton and the photoelectric effect are the, are the two um, most important interactions in diagnostic radiology. Okay, classical, very, very, very little. Okay, it just adds a little bit of what we call fog to the image. Okay, um, but Compton and photoelectric are the only two. The next two we'll talk about aren't, aren't related to diagnostics, so we'll uh, do a little comparison of Compton and photoelectric effect here. Um, the Compton most likely to occur with outer shell electrons with loosely bound electrons, okay? Um, the photoelectric effect occurs with inner shell electrons, tightly bound electrons. So when X-ray energy is just higher than the electron binding energy, Okay, so when the energy of the incident photon is slightly higher than the binding energy of the inner shell electrons, then it's more likely to occur. As X-ray energy increases with Compton, as X-ray energy increases, increased penetration through tissue without interaction. Okay, so that's a general. So as the energy of the beam increases, it's much more likely just to be transmitted through the patient, okay? The more energetic it is, the more likely it is just to go right through the patient, okay? So that's true with both, all right? Uh, increased Compton scattering relative to photoelectric effect. So as we increase the energy of the beam, Compton scattering is gonna happen much more often than photoelectric. Overall, there's gonna be an increase of transmission through the patient, okay, as we increase energy overall. However, the Compton is gonna occur much more often, okay, and that's due to the E over three, and E to the, th uh, and uh, the one to the E, and the one to the E over three, okay? So, uh, so Compton's gonna occur much more often as energy relative, relatively, as energy increases, but overall it's, it's gonna happen less. Okay. Um, as atomic number increases, uh, there's no effect with Compton. As atomic number increases with the photoelectric effect, there's an increase in the proportion of the cube of the atomic number. Okay. 
um, as the mass density of matter. Okay, we haven't talked about mass density, but we will. The proportional increase in Compton scattering, proportional increase in photoelectric effect. So here's a nice graph of what we just talked about with the energy, because it can be slightly hard to conceptualize, okay? So as energy increases, so this would be higher and higher energy, the uh, number of occurrences to occur, just how likely it is to occur, right? The probability of these occurring will decrease, okay? So no matter, no matter if it's Compton or photoelectric, it's, it's on an overall decreasing trend, right? As energy goes up. <clears throat> However, Compton, because it occurs as 1 over E, the inverse of the energy, it occurs, it's going to start occurring much more often than the photoelectric effect. Okay, um, so Compton eventually is going to trump, you say, it's going to be the main uh, interaction that's going on between these two. It's going to be the main interaction that's going on as the energy increases. Okay, it's going to occur much more likely. And this is a scattering event. This is something we don't necessarily want to happen, okay? Uh, we want the photoelectric effect to happen. That's going to make a white spot on the film, okay? Because it's not going to be transmitted through. Uh, Compton is just, it's just going to cause a fog. It's going to cause a mismatch of information to occur, all right, as energy increases. Okay, so we have a, a few questions, and this will help to kind of uh, um, show how often um, these interactions occur. And this one here, the uh, how likely a 60 keV X-ray will undergo Compton interactions compared to the photoelectric effect. Okay, so go ahead and uh, try these questions. You can pause the video here for a second and try these questions. The answers will be at the end of the video. Okay. The fourth type of interaction that we're going to talk about is pair production. When a photon interacts with the field of the nucleus of an atom, the nucleus emits a positively charged electron called a positron. It will also release an electron. The positron undergoes a complete annihilation event with another free-floating electron, uh, and two x-rays are released 180 degrees from each other, so in completely opposite directions, two x-rays are released. Uh, per production only occurs with energy levels above 1.02 mega electron volts. Okay, typically this interaction isn't seen in diagnostic radiology. Typically, we only use 120 uh, kVp. We typically only use 120 uh, kilo electron volts, and this is 1.02 million. Okay, so this isn't seen in diagnostic radiology. It is, however, very useful to actually how PET imaging operates, um, and it's also seen in nuclear medicine. Here's a diagram of it. So a very high energy incident photon interacts with the nucleus of an atom. It releases an electron. It also releases a positron, which is just a positively, this should really be a plus sign. It's a positively charged electron. Okay. It's, and this is, could be referred to as antimatter right here. Okay. An electron is, can interact with it. So with matter and antimatter, it's a complete uh, loss of energy, okay? Um, each one of these photons going off in each one of these directions is going to be 0 0.51 mega electron volts, so half of the 1.02 mega electron volts, okay? Um, and, and, and this is uh, how PET scan works, okay? It detects these two photons farther out, okay? Um, and then it marks that down as a, an event. This does not occur in diagnostic radiology. The other one that, the other type of interaction that can occur is called photo disintegration. When a photon interacts with the nucleus of an atom, the nucleus enters an excited state. Okay, so it's actually interacting with the nucleus of an atom and it emits a nucleon or other, some type of other nuclear fragment. 
photo disintegration only occurs with energy levels above 10 mega electron volts. This interaction isn't seen in diagnostic radiology at all. Um, so the incident photon comes in with a very high energy, it actually interacts with the nucleus itself where pair production only interacted with the field. This actually interacts with the atom, with the nucleus that has enough energy and a nuclear particle gets released from this, okay? I have a summation of everything here, okay? So um, you can look this over, all right? Pause the video here again, you can look it over. Uh, this is a nice little chart of of the um, of the five different interactions that we talked about. Okay, and of course Scott Compton Compton and the photoelectric effect. Okay, are the two uh, ones in diagnostic radiology that are important. All right. Next, we'll talk about attenuation. So attenuation. As we have learned, when x-rays interact with matter, they can be scattered, absorbed, or transmitted. Absorption and scattering events lessen the amount and the energy of the beam. Okay, and through this, this action is called attenuation. So a lessening in the amount of x-rays and also a lessening in the energy of the x-rays, okay, through the scattering events. Attenuation depends on, on the different factors of the anatomy part being x-rayed. Attenuation depends on tissue thickness. Increasing tissue thickness increases beam attenuation, so the more tissue that it goes through, the more likely um, the x-rays are to go through these interactions that we talked about and the more attenuation is going to occur. Their x-rays are attenu attenuated exponentially. In general, a reduction of 50% occurs for every 4 to 5 centimeters of tissue thickness. So this uh, translates to if there's a thousand x-rays, let's just say, entering 15 centimeters of tissue, then after five centimeters, okay, after five centimeters, it's going to be reduced about 50%, okay? So then there'll be 500 of the original thousand. The next five centimeters, again, a 50% reduction, 250. The next five, again, of uh, a 50% reduction, so 125 x-rays will remain. So 1,000 x-rays you start out with, after 15, about, about 15 centimeters of tissue, there's only 125 left. So this would be the loss, okay, of, um, of x-ray photons. Attenuation depends on the tissue type. So tissues of higher atomic number attenuates more than tissues composed of lower atomic number. And this should make sense with what we just learned with the photoelectric effect, right? So um, the higher the atomic number, the more likely it is to for the photoelectric effect to occur, which is an absorption of it, okay? So those um, x-ray photons are gonna be absorbed inside the material and they're not gonna be transmitted out okay as the uh, atomic number increases attenuation depends on the tissue density the more compact matter is the more attenuation that will occur and we measure the tissue density in kilograms uh, divided by meters cubed okay and this is known as mass density of the tissue Two tissues can have similar atomic number, but different mass, mass densities. Therefore, the tissues will attenuate the beam differently, um, which, which we'll look at in, in the next slide. Uh, attenuation depends on x-ray beam quality. Okay, So the higher the quality of the beam, the less attenuation will occur. 
and this goes back to the probability again. So the probability of the photoelectric effect happening is the inverse of the energy to the third, right? The inverse of the energy to the third. So the more energy you have, the much, much less likely it is to interact photoelectrically with the material, the much more likely it is just to be transmitted straight through, okay? We call KVP the penetration, okay, of the beam, all right? The energy, how, how likely it is to go through the material. The, um, and with the Compton effect, okay, as attenuation is both the lessening of the amount of x-rays and also decreasing of the energy of the x-rays that are making it through, so through the Compton effect, and um, the um, <clears throat> the x-ray photons losing energy, okay, from the incident photon coming in, the scattered photon has less energy, right, that we just learned. So that also occurs as the inverse of E. Okay, so as the beam energy goes up, the interactions of Compton are less likely to happen also. So, um, so the higher the quality, the higher the energy of the beam, the less attenuation that will occur. All right, and we'll look at some of those mass densities that we talked about here, all right? So attenuation depends on mass density, all right, um, of the material. So s look at these two here. So something like lung and soft tissue. Okay, they have very similar Z numbers. So as far as the probability of the photoelectric effect, which depends on Z, that they'll be exactly the same. But due to the mass density here, okay, it's much more likely that it's gonna interact with soft tissue being more dense. Okay, this is just the way that the atoms are together, okay, in the tissue. So um, it, soft tissue is more dense than one. So an X-ray of um, an X-ray photon is much more likely to interact roughly three times more likely to interact with soft tissue than it is with lung, even though the Z numbers are, are the same. The effective Z numbers are the same, okay? And you can see some of the other effective atomic numbers here and the, uh, the mass densities associated with them. Right. Um, air is very interesting. Air is 7.9 or 7.6, the effective atomic number, because it's mostly made up of nitrogen. But the mass density, of course, is very low because the air molecules, uh, the atoms aren't very close to each other, right? So the density is very low. So even though it has a higher effective uh, atomic number, it's the mass density is so low that it X-rays aren't going to interact with it, right, uh, at a very high occurrence. So this brings up to differential absorption, okay? So <clears throat> as was just discussed, the likelihood of the X-ray photons uh, interacting either Compton or photoelectrically, right, um, depends on the mass density okay, of the tissue. So with the Z number, with the photoelectric effect in the Z number, and then the mass density of the different parts of the body being different, they're gonna absorb differently, okay? And we call this differential absorption. So different absorption, differential absorption is the difference between the X-rays that are absorbed and those that are transmitted through the body. The photoelectric effect is the only total absorption interaction. Uh, this creates the image. Um, some x-rays are transmitted and make an area on the image darker. Okay, so when an x-ray hits the film, it's darker, right? And others are absorbed, and this makes the image lighter, okay? Which is like whiter, will become whiter. So places that where the x-rays are absorbed, like typically in bone or metal or things like that, right? They show up white on the x-ray. Things like the surrounding air and lung, they show up very black because more x-rays are transmitted through them, all right? 
and the difference in the way that the tissue um, transmits and absorbs the x-ray photons is, is the differential absorption okay so it's the difference between effective Z numbers and the mass density of the tissues so differential absorption is an atomic number the total relative probability of absorption so we're talking about photoelectric effect is Z to the third and the mass density of the tissues involved all right so let's think about this as we want to answer a question find the total probability of, absor of absorption in fat compared to air okay and we have that table okay that we had before um so we'll set up the equation okay so we need to look at the z number to the third of fat the z number to the third of air okay we need to multiply that by the mass density of fat and divided by the mass density of air okay so we we keep this like this all right on on in, in line with each other okay and that would be the total total relative probability all right so from that chart we'll go ahead we'll grab the numbers we'll plug them in here all right when we plug them in here we get that x-rays are more are 398.7 times more likely to be absorbed in fat than in air okay so even though the z number of air okay this is a z number of air uh, 7.6 is higher because the mass density is so low of air right it's um it's 400 about 400 times more likely that an x-ray photon is going to be absorbed by fat than in the air okay so 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 that's very interesting so that just shows how the mass density of the tissue affects differential absorption okay so how how the tissue is what what's it what it's composed of the z number and also how it's arranged right kind of is like the mass density how how compact together the um the tissue is right it's going to affect how it's absorbed okay and that's the difference absorption differential absorption all right let's talk about differential absorption and energy so remember that the likelihood of the photoelectric effect depends on the quality of the beam and this is the energy the inverse inner the inverse of the energy to the third okay the inverse of the energy to the th raised to the third power if the energy which is just the kvp that we set at the concert right is increased the probability of absorption decreases okay and this isn't this isn't what we want when we're trying to create an image okay so if there's no absorption on the image there won't be any any white or grays it'll just all be black okay if there's no absorption there's only transmission the whole film is going to be black and we have no image all right so if we increase the kvp too much we're just going to create a black image all right and this isn't what we want so we're just going to lower the kvp down right well, why not just lower the kvp all the way down okay the patient dose is also going to decrease as we raise the kvp all right because all the x-rays are just going to be transmitted and are going to be absorbed right or less are going to be absorbed okay um so we want to lower the kvp now to create the image all right so if we lower the kvp the patient dose is going to increase all right so the task of the radiographer is to balance the need for absorption of the beam and the patient dose okay so so this is what we have to take in mind when we're setting our technique all right is what do we want to have the kvp so based on the anatomy that we're x-raying so absorption is going to occur to the degree that we want to create a quality image right by lowering the kvp more absorption is going to happen but also 
not a, not adding to the dose of the patient because when we lower the KVP, we're adding to the dose of the patient. Okay, so this is um, so this is something that we need to consider when uh, we're setting our techniques. Here we have some differential absorption questions. Okay, and now and I, we have the chart over here, so you can refer to that. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video. You can answer these as well. Okay, it's great. Good practice is also great to conceptualize what's happening. Okay, to put some 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 numbers to the ideas. So this is asking total probability. Okay, that is 60 keV X-ray absorbing in bone compared to 80 keV X-ray absorbing in, in absorbing in bone. So when we're talking about an absorbing event, we're talking about the photoelectric effect. Okay, and remember that. It's the inverse of e to the three. Okay, for this. Um, here we have two different materials, so you want to take everything into consideration. Okay, and here we have two different energies. Okay, there's one energy of uh, for iodine. Okay, and then there's a higher energy of soft tissue. Okay, and this is an extreme example um, here of how energy of the beam and the material, okay, which we wouldn't be using 55 keV on iodine, okay, this would be flipped, all right, okay, but it's just showing an extreme example of how, um, of how the energy and the material that you're x-raying really affects the, how likely it is to be absorbed. Okay, so go ahead and pause it here, work out these uh, few questions, and we'll give you the answers in a couple slides here. The questions from before, the interactions uh, uh, probability, okay, these are the answers here. So the probability that a 90 keV x-ray will undergo the photoelectric interaction in concrete compared to fat, okay? So we have a 90 keV x-ray, all right? So the energy doesn't matter because the energy is not changing. So we don't need to take into account the energy, okay? It will just be 90 to the third over 90 to the third anyways, and that's just gonna equal one, okay? So we don't need to take that into effect. And um, what we do need to take to effect is the Z number, right? So this is the probability, this isn't this was from before, this isn't the total probability, okay? So we're only taking it into account the Z numbers, all right? Um, and it's roughly 20 times more likely to occur in concrete than it is in fat, okay? So the x-ray is gonna be absorbed in the concrete 20 times uh, more often, and it's not gonna continue on, all right? And in fat, all right? Uh, what is the relative probability that a 60 keV x-ray will undergo Compton? Interactions compared to photoelectric. So remember that it's the inverse of E, right, for Compton. It's the inverse of E to the third for photoelectric. So, uh, so we're going to have 60 to the three for how often it's going to undergo photoelectric, and it's going to be 60. Okay. So it's going to undergo Compton. Okay, because we're doing inverse here. It's going to uh, undergo Compton roughly 3,600 more times okay then photoelectric at the 60 okay so we said as energy goes up right it's going to um compton's going to take over okay 60 kv isn't isn't a high energy x-ray okay so if this was 100 this would be this would be 10,000 okay it would be 10,000 at 100 uh, kev all right so um, as energy goes up, Compton's going to happen more often, which is those scattering events that we don't want, okay? So this is something else that to consider when we're setting our technique, right? Um, how much more likely is it that an x-ray will be absorbed photoelectrically in iodine fat compared to bone, okay? Iodine and fat compared to bone. So in iodine, it's going to be the uh, 62 to the 3 over 13 to the 3, right? Uh, Z to the 3, so it's going to be 108 times more likely to occur, okay, 
um, the iodine is going to absorb than in fat. Okay. Um, oh, that is going to then in bone. Okay, and iodine then in bone. Okay, now in fat. So, how much more likely is it to occur in in a fat than bone? Okay, so we set up our equation the same way here, and it's 0.11. Okay, so when we're talking about like it's two times more likely, right? That means it's twice as more likely. Here, we have a, a decimal. Okay, so that means that it's only it's uh, like one ninth, about a ninth of the time uh, more likely. Okay, so it's going to occur, you know, it's going to occur in bone nine times more. Okay, but in fat, it's going to occur a ninth as often. Okay, is what that means, which, which you know, makes sense because fat is a lower Z number, right? And bone. So these were the second questions, the second group of questions. All right. Um, so what is the total probability that a 60 keV X-ray absorbing in bone compared to 80? Okay. So the Z number is constant, so we don't have to worry about that here, right? Okay. So we're just doing the inverse of the energies, which is also to the third when we're talking about the absorption. Okay. So uh, that an X-ray <clears throat> is absorbed, okay? So a 60 keV x-ray is going to be absorbed 2.7 times more often than an 80 keV, keV x-ray, okay? Remember, it's the inverse that we're doing here, right? So, um, so it's going to occur roughly three times as often absorption with a 60 keV x-ray than as an 80. KV X ray, okay. What is the total probability of a 75 KV X ray will be absorbed in lead and concrete? All right, so the KVP is constant, right? So we don't need to take that into consideration with this question at all, right? That it will be absorbed in lead than concrete, okay? So you know, we use lead for shielding, right? And concrete is a very good shield, much better than our bodies, right? Much better than our fat, much better than our muscle, okay? And everything, it's gonna um, absorb that radiation much better, okay? So we see here how even though concrete is a good absorber relatively of x-rays, how much better lead is, right? So we have 83 to the third, and then the mass density, all right, of concrete. And then we have the 17, which is the effective atomic number of concrete to the third, and then the mass density, all right? So it's 542 times more likely to be absorbed by that lead, which when we're using for shielding is what, we, especially what we want, right? We want the energy to be absorbed in that lead so it doesn't make it through, okay? We want all the attenuation, all right, all the energy loss to occur. And if it would happen that some did make it through by some chance, then it's going to be very low energy, all right, okay? So it's 542 times more likely to occur in the lead than concrete, okay? So that's why we use lead. It's also relatively cheap, and we can make it the way we want, okay? Um, so this is a more complicated question here. What is the total probability that 55 keV x-ray will be absorbed in iodine compared to 100 keV x-ray absorbed in soft tissue okay so we set up our equation this way here all right because we're talking about energy so it's the inverse all right so we have the 100 kV all right and then the soft tissues down here okay because uh, energy is the inverse all right so a hundred to the third 55 to the third okay and we multiply it out with the Z numbers and the mass densities and it's 10,000 times more likely, okay, that a 55 keV x-ray is going to be absorbed in iodine than a 100 keV x-ray is going to be absorbed in soft tissue. Now, this is an extreme example, all right? So, normally, normally, okay, um, 
we would be using high KVPs for the iodine, okay? So we could penetrate the iodine some and we could see some details inside the contrast, okay? If we were given uh, the iodine, of course, for a positive contrast media, right? So um, 100, if we were using, let's just say we were using 100 for the iodine, 100 KV for the iodine, the likelihood of uh, absorption would be 693, all right? If we, 100 for just the soft tissue, okay, is 0 0.4, all right? So this would also be another reason, okay, why we set certain KVPs for certain body parts, okay? Um, this is the end of the lesson. Right. Um, I hope to see you in the next video.